Hello everybody and welcome back to the HLTCO YouTube channel. Apologies for the fact that it's been a little while since I last came to you with a video. I've actually decided over the last few weeks that I am going to row back slightly in terms of the content that I am providing for YouTube because let's be honest here, it became a little bit too much for me in terms of the regularity of the videos with a young family, with my little boy going to school full time now, with you know the podcast twice a day and, and trying to get people to sign up for that. So I've decided to go back to the tried and tested method I suppose you could say of doing a once weekly video looking into a, a specific topic and the topic that I have chosen this week is actually John Massinho and the work that he has been doing as Portsmouth boss across the last eight or nine months. Uh, you may well be already fully across it and well aware of the fantastic job that he is doing at Fratton Park uh, but if you are somewhat on the outside uh, they are currently on an 11 match unbeaten run to start the League One campaign. They find themselves at the very top of the table and that is actually part of a 22 game unbeaten run uh, which straddles the back end of last term and the beginning of this and the actual uh, progression of Portsmouth under John Massinho wasn't really foreseen by anyone either inside or outside of Portsmouth FC uh, because ultimately John Massinho came to that football club from Oxford having been previously actually registered as a player as part of Oxford United's first team. I think he was actually coaching set pieces when Rich Hughes decided, as Portsmouth Sporting Director, to take him to Fratton Park. And it was a managerial appointment, which I think it's fair to say a fair few Portsmouth fans had their reservations about. But over the course of the last eight or nine months, he has really won over all of his doubters. And they currently find themselves at the top of the table, playing some fantastic football, having a real solid defensive framework, but also keeping hold of the ball in a fashion that hasn't really been something Portsmouth fans have been used to across the last few years and hopefully across the course of this video uh, you will find out exactly why he is doing such a stellar job and why it doesn't really feel fanciful to suggest that Portsmouth will be there or thereabouts when it comes to the promotion candidates at the back end of this League One season. Whilst it is obviously tempting from a narrative-driven perspective to just suggest that John Massinho went into Fratton Park, waved a magic wand and suddenly got that Portsmouth team playing exactly how he wanted it to, if you speak to most Portsmouth fans, a huge amount of credit will be laid at the door of Rich Hughes, the sporting director who I believe they brought in from Forest Green for the transfer business that he conducted across the summer window just gone, most of it done on a complete shoestring. Uh, there are a host of different players that I'm going to reel off now now on free transfers that have come into this Portsmouth side and made an immediate difference to them and really aided John Massinho, not just in terms of you know the ability to put out a strong starting eleven, but in giving him the depth to actually make tactical changes from the bench week to week to ensure that they are competitive throughout 90-minute fixtures. Uh, if you look at the back, Connor Shaughnessy, a centre-back that came in from Burton Albion on a free transfer, has been a real revelation, paired with Regan Paul, another free transfer who came in from Lincoln. Uh, he has actually contributed with three goals so far in the league campaign. Uh, he is someone that, if you speak to Portsmouth fans, has a genuine ball-playing ability to him. And when you know you look at their defensive solidarity, it is something which, it sounds like a cliche, of course, but if you are going to win titles or win automatic promotion from EFL divisions, you are going to need to build from the back first and foremost. And if you actually look at the early stages of John Massinho's time as Portsmouth boss, I think everyone knew that he was able to put a team out who would be relatively solid from a defensive perspective, there were some grumbles or some worries about whether or not that would ever transform into a goal-scoring, free-flowing style of football. Uh, that has changed somewhat this season, particularly with Colby Bishop up front managing to bag all sorts of goals. But if you look at the defensive unit that they've put together there under John Massinho, aided by this summer of business, it really does look like they are built on solid foundations. Alongside those two free transfers, you have also seen Jack Sparks arrived for another free uh, from Exeter City. He has actually made 12 league appearances so far for Portsmouth uh, this season, albeit not all of them from the start, but he is certainly another uh, very entertaining and useful player for John Massinho in this current tactical setup. And in goal, you've got Will Norris, yet another free transfer, this time from Burnley. Uh, he has had five clean sheets so far in the League One campaign. Obviously, from his point of view as a goalkeeper, he will be absolutely brimming with confidence at the moment, given the fact they find themselves top of the 
the league and flying. Uh, but if you speak to Portsmouth fans, one of the key attributes about Will Norris's game, which has really impressed them, is the fact that he can play out from the back and really mesh well with what John Massino is trying to do in terms of ball retention and making sure they can build gradually from the back and pick their moments when the time is right. And when you look at Rich Hughes specifically here, you know the fact that he has been able to bring all of those players to Fratton Park with zero transfer fee attached is something of a, a work of alchemy. You know, it's very easy to suggest that you can just scour the free transfer market and pick up quality players, but finding players who weren't necessarily remarkable elsewhere, bringing them into with the Portsmouth squad under John Massino's guidance and then getting them working as a cohesive unit is certainly an act uh, which will and has uh, drawn plenty of praise for Rich Hughes from the Portsmouth faithful. It's worth highlighting when looking at John Massino's time in charge of Portsmouth that at 37 years old, he inherited a club who, regardless of their previous glories from yesteryear, you know, the European adventures, Harry Redknapp in the dugout, Jermaine Defoe, Peter Crouch, we could reel off all sorts of different names and faces. They are a club who have been stuck in the third tier of English football for six or seven years now. I believe it is 12 years since they last played in the second tier of the English game. And when he first went into Portsmouth, I believe they were on a run of three months without a league victory. So when you look in isolation at the success they've had in the early stages of this campaign, and indeed the back end of last season, it is remarkable in and of itself. But when you actually contrast it to the team that he inherited and the general feel around that football club at that particular point, it's even more astounding. And that in itself is something which I don't believe you can do on a wing and a prayer. I think the entire way that Portsmouth operate from a tactical perspective, keeping possession being fierce in getting it back as quickly as possible when they do lose it and making sure that they can see out games in relative comfort or at least have the ability to get back into these fixtures should they fall behind. It all feels like a very solid foundation that is being laid by John Massino and it is credit to him because you know age is something which is often used as a stick to beat people with when it comes to management, a lack of experience and if you speak to Portsmouth fans the vast majority of them will tell you that he is learning on the job. There are edges being being knocked off him as weeks go by but the initial foundation that is there for him in a tactical perspective has worked wonders and whenever you can get a team to go 22 games unbeaten across the back end of one season and the beginning of the next you do really feel as though you are on something of a runaway train of momentum you know it isn't being done in Ipswich's style from last season where they scored all sorts of goals took that division by storm and then of course won promotion to the championship and replicated it with Kieran McKenna in the early stages of this campaign, it feels far more uh, gradual and almost as if it's a drip, drip, drip from Portsmouth's perspective. But if you are a Pompey fan, then watching that and seeing the potential in that group will only add to your belief that when it comes to January, February, March, uh, the team ethos will be so strong that you will get over the line. Uh, and I think that really has to be something that John Massino is giving huge credit for because it's one thing having the idea of making sure you control possession, keep it at the back attack when the moment is right and not be too gung-ho. It's another completely to actually implement that from week to week for a team like Portsmouth who do have this real desperation as a fan base to get back into the championship and then eventually uh, back into the top flight as well. Throughout my time talking to Portsmouth fans in researching this video, two of the biggest watchwords that I have come across time and again uh, when looking at John Massino's team and what exactly he has done to change things at Fratton Park have been togetherness and belief. Uh, I know that sounds like something of a cliche. Every single team that is at the top of their division will view those two things as, as paramount to their success. But if you look specifically at the way that Portsmouth have played, particularly in the early stages of this campaign, I believe they have come back on nine separate occasions this season alone uh, to actually get a point or three from a losing position and that in itself is quite remarkable I'm sure you can agree of course across a 46 game campaign you would want to iron out all of those creases and make sure that you do keep more clean sheets that you have a greater level of control from the first minute until the last but if you can foster that sense of belief in what you are doing and straddle those two separate campaigns with a 22 game unbeaten run then the players under your 
guidance will start to believe that they are unbeatable, that they can be one or two goals down with, say, 10 minutes to go away from home and still salvage something from it. And if you can work out a defensive framework that gets you more clean sheets than conceding one or two every week, then really you will be away and, and you know, cantering towards an automatic promotion place in the third tier. One of the key factors as well in John Massinho's entire growth as Portsmouth boss has been his attitude in the media. I spoke to a fair few Portsmouth fans about him and most of them have said the same sort of things in relation to his entire persona when it comes to off-field interviews and the way that he carries himself in the press because I think he gives an impression that he is wise beyond his years, that he has this calm, serene nature to him, that he knows exactly what he wants from his players but he is also incredibly driven and passionate to make sure that this Portsmouth project goes off with a bang. You know, they have had all sorts of different managers at Portsmouth over the years. They've had the heart on the sleeve types, your Paul Cooks. They've had the emotional ice queens or ice kings in Kenny Jacket. I'm not sure quite why I've described Kenny Jacket as an ice queen there, but we will skate over that. But I think in John Massinho, they have an individual that sort of straddles both of those lines perfectly. He seems to be the perfect meshing of personalities for Portsmouth as a fan base. You know, they aren't ever going to be putting themselves up there as one of the elite clubs in English football in terms of their following, but they do have an incredibly passionate and in-tune fan base that do want to see that football club kick on, that do want to see them return to the Championship and potentially even back to the Premier League and whilst we are still in very early days of John Massinho's managerial tenure, I think the early signs for him, not just on the pitch but in the way that he carries himself across the entire club, are extremely positive. In terms of a tactical setup from a Portsmouth perspective under the guidance of John Massinho, they operate with a 4 2 3 1 formation. Uh, they look to utilise the flanks primarily as their best source of attack. Uh, but as I have said already in the video, they are not a team that will throw the kitchen sink at you in terms of their attacking efforts. They are pragmatic, they do look to control the ball, and maybe even more importantly than that, when they do lose possession, they are feverish in their desire to win it back as quickly as possible and almost replicate in many ways. Ways, the style of football that has been made uh, so uniformed by Pep Guardiola, by Jurgen Klopp, you know, that desire to constantly be in control of the game and strangle your opponents to within an inch of their life. But also, if you look at the closing stages of fixtures, and this is something that has cropped up time and again in my conversations with Portsmouth fans over the last week or so, whenever they are late in a game and, and trying to see something out, they won't fall into the age-old trap of sitting deep and, and retreating into their own penalty area too much. They look to finish games strong, they look to be on the front foot, and they do look to ultimately control the ball and take any semblance of, of hope or faith away from their opponents. And of course, that's easier said than done sometimes you will come into certain hurdles or obstacles that you cannot move but ultimately I think the key thing that I have taken away in my discussions with Portsmouth fans about John Massinho's style of play is that he's trying to get across to his players that they can control games that they can be superior that they can feel superior week after week and eventually that gets hardwired into your psyche you know, it's one thing a coach saying that they want to play possession-based football, but when the pressure comes on, if you aren't truly committed to that from a tactical ideology point of view, you will fall back into your old habits. But in John Massinho, at the very start of his coaching career, you have got a manager that quite clearly has a simplistic framework for exactly how he wants to operate, and he has stuck with it. And I think this really is a measure in something being given the time and backing necessary uh, to feed into the players' mindsets, because you're looking at an eight or nine month managerial appointment now it didn't start in the most outrageous of fashions you know they were having games where they weren't scoring goals there were moans there were grumbles but the hierarchy at Fratton Park have stayed behind uh, John Massinho and they are now seeing the fruits of that labour and you know I'm not suggesting that Portsmouth shouldn't be there or thereabouts when it comes to a promotion push but I think the way that they have operated in this first 11 or so games of the League One campaign coupled with the way they finished the previous season it does give me real you know belief that they can go on and secure promotion back to the championship with the minimum of fuss and given the fact that Rich Hughes has proven himself to be such an adept worker in the transfer market I think they can go potentially into a season in the championship 
and I admit, you know, this may be getting a little bit ahead of myself now, but believe that they can actually attract the sort of players necessary to fit in well with what John Massinho wants to do and ensure that they are a competitive side in the second tier. You know, they have bounced around the divisions over the last 20 years or so. We are all well aware of that. But if you have someone like John Massinho, who despite the fact that he is still at the infancy of his managerial career, has this sense of calm, this serene nature to him, but also this laser guided focus, then you really can start to believe as a fan that you have a manager that can be there for the long haul. And we have seen it with Kieran McKenna in Ipswich, I go back to it again, but this is a manager that is being touted for all sorts of big jobs now. But you look at Ipswich, you look at their direction of travel, and quite clearly, he will feel that he is well suited to the Tractor Boys and what is going on at Portman Road. And Fratton Park isn't necessarily the same. You know, you look at the history with Ipswich and Bobby Robson, what they were able to achieve under George Burley in the Premier League. But Ipswich, sorry, Portsmouth even, are a big football club. They're a club who have this passionate fan base. And if you look at Fratton Park as a whole, you know, it is an incredibly intimidating place to go, even if you are a Premier League side. No one wants to go and play Portsmouth away from home regardless of which division they are in so if you can build up this head of steam with this tactical ideology that has clearly been laid in stone by John Massinho despite the fact that he's only been at the club eight or nine months it really does feel as though they have solid foundations and I've been blown away really speaking to Portsmouth fans about the general sense of enthusiasm that they all have for their football club once again you know a huge amount of credit I think has to go to the Cowley brothers for actually turning the apathy that existed amongst much of Portsmouth's fan base around but now you've got John Massinho there a manager that came in with I say next to no fanfare it was almost minus fanfare really when you consider where he was prior to that appointment but for him to have won over so many hearts and minds across his first few months at the football club it really does speak to a manager that is learning on the job and has the faith of the fans already and and that is half the battle when you are a manager if you can you know get everyone along on the ride with you then you are almost there you know and I think the players have shown that they have faith in him given the fact they've come from behind so often the fans have been won over they're scoring goals they're top of the league they're still unbeaten of course the wheels could come off and they will encounter numerous you know challenges throughout the rest of this 48 the 46 game season sorry but if you actually look at the foundations, I think they are rock solid. And I think there is every reason to believe that Portsmouth will be a championship football club by the time this season comes to a close. Obviously, that could well leave me with egg on my face, but I feel pretty confident in making that particular prediction. Hopefully, you have enjoyed uh, this breakdown of Portsmouth for today's video. As I say, I will be back next week. I'm probably going to discuss Middlesbrough and their resurgence in recent weeks under Michael Carrick. Hopefully, you will tune in for that. If you are interested in hearing more from me, I do record a daily Crystal Palace podcast and a daily general football podcast over on Patreon. Uh, they are £3 a month each, delivered straight to your inbox by 8.30am. If you have enjoyed this video, please do consider uh, giving it a like and pushing the subscribe button because it always does help massively uh, to see the channel grow and to push it into more and more people's feeds. So I will sign off there for today and look forward to speaking to you again soon. Cheers.